Hello and welcome back. I am Antonio and this is The Art of Game Design. So today we'll be talking about how to do a good pitch. On the very first uh, initial concept, you should include a bit of an idea for who the game is for. Right? We talked about this. And considering that, considering that audience, who the game is for, is the very start of a good pitch. Right? The other thing is to have a clear idea of something that people are looking for. Right? Be it a theme, be it a mechanic, be it um, maybe some sort of um, iteration on something that you probably already did so you have already sort of like a, a, an ecosystem of, of fans that's interest in your style in your particular style of game and then you're bringing that with with a little bit of a of a new novelty of something you know giving it a twist right I'm being a little vague here but bear with me and the other thing that's contemplated right in the, the, the concept, right? The audience, the game itself, the mechanics, the theme that have popularity, that are hot, but also the innovation, right? Something that's new, right? There is nothing like it. It's, it's something that's completely, um, it doesn't have to be groundbreaking, but it's something never seen before, right? Um, and it can be something tiny, right? A little, a little sprinkle of this just in the right amount, right? A little twist in a given mechanic that's very common and very popular. You give it a little twist on its head, right? And that makes it new and that it's interesting and then people will want that. So all of these elements that are already being cooked together during the concept phase and then developed further on during your project, all of these will be the very ground of your pitch because your pitch needs to be short be it a, a, a video pitch be it a, a just a one page and what do you call that one page sale uh, there's this thing you know the one page thing where you put every all of these details with a few images um, be it in be it in person if you're pitching the game like an elevator pitch right you need to be concise so Bringing up these elements is what a publisher wants to hear, right? The publishers are interested in how to sell this game, how, to, how this game sells. And all of these informations are very important to measure if the game is sellable or not, right? Does it have anything new? Awesome. Does it have something that people really want? Awesome. Does it, does it know very well who it's targeting and how big that audience is? If it's a very large audience, Awesome, great. Does the theme add something of value, like something that's 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 um, an, an ongoing topic that's being talked about that's important to raise awareness? Something like like I don't know the the environment or the climate change or something like that. There's there's value in that, or um, you know, is it, it, it? You need to consider these small details. Publishers want to hear this, right? Publishers want these little. You know, some of them are a little bit petty in, in don't get me wrong some some of them sometimes feel a little bit you know like almost political you know the the, the race and all this and, and the, the, the is it is it about war and what style of war is a colonial war oh uh, uh. so publishers will stay away from certain things that are frowned upon in the current um uh, present time but you need to be aware of these things you need to do the research you need to look up is there anything like this and if not why is it is it because it's it hasn't been done before people just skipped past through it nobody noticed that this could be a good idea or is it because this is something that really publishers don't want to go into you know be in, be in a state where they, they it could backfire right it could it could uh, be something that has this social lash cancel culture you know we don't want that right we want to stay away from that you know it's not that you can't do something that might raise a little bit of uh, noise you know you can but it, it's definitely not something you want to do on your very first game right 
you can be a little bit more uh, eccentric when you have a few games published. With your very first game, right, and your second game also, you need to be a little bit more strategic in how you plan your 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 things, you know. And then all of these subjects, the political and all of this, and the, and things that will create a little bit of attention, you know, stay away from those, okay, and go towards the other way, which is you know those things that are commonly approved and everybody loves and everybody wants to talk about. Let's talk about peace and let's talk about let's talk about dogs and cats and stuff, you know. So yeah, go towards what, what people want right now and stay away from what people tend to have, you know, polarity, you know. Polarity sometimes is good to sell a game, but it can really backfire. So publishers will tend to stay away from things that are polarizing. And, you know, and, and if it has a lot of big group that's very verbal and very noisy against those, you know. Yeah. So I'm taking a long time talking about this. Let's go back to what we really want to know, which is how to do the pitch. The real nitty gritty details. So the first thing you want to do is have your game in a state where it's presentable, which is after your alpha testing. Remember, we talked about alpha testing. It's after your alpha testing phase, right? When you're going uh, into the point where you feel that this is... This has its set of wheels right now and it flows on its own and people seem to be enjoying and I feel like this is at a point where the things that I would like to add to it don't really uh, change it too much. So instead of adding those things, you know, and, and making it a bigger thing, you know, show it as it is, you know, if you're happy with what it is, right? So this is the point where we'll do the pitch, right? And now you need to have a good prototype. You could do a, a live prototype or a, a digital prototype with Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator, something like that. We'll look into that and how to do that in another lesson. We can't cover that now, but I'll teach you how to do that. And then we, you're going to have that prototype and then you're going to create this video or, or a, I don't know, a, a one page. I forget the name of the thing. One page sale. I don't know what it's called, but you know what it is. Look it up. Um, and then you're going to do that, right? And you really need to do it in the shortest, most appealing way possible. So you need to present it by what makes it uh, interesting, right? If you got yourself a, a party game, you really need to bring in that element of fun with a large group and something that people will t will have a good laugh, you know, and, and bring out that humor part and so have your pitch start off with a little bit of, of, of setting and mood, right? Give it the, be it, it's a funny mood, it's a funny setting, or it's a gloomy mood for a Halloween night. Or, and, but, but make it, you know, so that you set that theme, set that setting, and, and, and start your pitch with that, right? You are a, a, a vampire in this environment where we're all trying to do this and that, and then and, and suddenly this will this and that, and when everybody chooses their card, I don't know. You get the idea, right? Toss it out there with a little bit of salt, with a little bit of, of seasoning, right? And so you do that. And then if you're doing a video format, this, this is basically by showing a little bit of the components and narrating over it, right? Just a couple of seconds, just giving it a setting, getting, establishing a mood, establishing a, a setting, giving the impression of, of what it could be. And then you go into the hard details, right? How many players does it play? How long does it take? And who the age appropriate in the group and who's this for, right? And maybe a, a, a standout feature like a, a specific mechanic or a specific blend of two mechanics with a specific theme, right? You go like this, a one, two, three, four, boom, boom, boom. This game is two to four, four no, 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 it's a cooperative, da, 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 it has this and this again, same for children and families and one. Yeah. You, you do it like a rapid fire. Da, 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 da. So you do that first initial opening, you give it a little bit of it, and then you do this rapid fire of all these details. Because publishers want to, you know, get a quick idea of, okay, this is this, this, this is that. And, and then you go into detail to the things. 
trying to keep things cohesive, you keep the, the same, almost in a single breath, you do the rapid fire and right after that, you bring it back to the start. So at the beginning of this game, you start off, no, 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 and your goal, so you, do, you need to start by giving the goal right off the bat. Your, your goal is to win or have the most points or, or beat the time before time runs out, finish this or that or survive as long as these turns or these rounds. You give the goal right out the start, you give the, the, the objective, you give it that, and then you do on your turn, you skip to you, on your turn you do this and that and this and that and this and that, and the game will come to a close with this and that happens. So it, you almost need to be able to do this like in a single breath, right? And it needs to be clear, right? Don't eat the words, don't do anything, it needs to be clear. Right? You do this setting, you do the rapid fire of the details, and then you do the big loop around of the game. How it begins, what is its goal, and how does it actually work on your turn, or in a round if there are no turns, or, <coughs> or if it's a simultaneous whimsical type of thing, you know, where everybody's screaming around, you do the, oh, it's a real time, do crazy thing, run around the table. You get the idea. And you need to do this almost in a single breath, right? That's your pitch. That's your pitch, right? You can you can close it off right there. If it's an elevator pitch, you know, like, bing, okay, see you. Think about it, okay? I'll call you or here's my card, you know? Or if you have a little bit more time, if you're doing a video or if you're writing a, a one-page sale, you can, you know, do the, the extras, you know? On top of this, we will have a variant for, it will have also cooperative mode, or it will have a solo mode, or it will have 10 expansions planned out from simple things that uh, add no complexity to big things that change the game completely, or miniatures, or deluxified, you know, you can, publishers also like to know where a game can grow, right? And also, if you're a little unsure on the theme, right, what's the big selling point of your game is actually just the rule set with no theme, you need to open that up for the publisher and say, I would love for you to theme this, to theme this game, to, to, to create and ground this game in a cool theme, you know, and put the publisher involved. Get him to get him to to start thinking about what he can do with that game and what he where he can take that game. Publishers want space to grow, right? The, be it space to grow in terms of extra elements that can be sold on top of the game or or as expansions or add-ons or whatever, and things that they can also uh, improve. In your game right that gives them space to sort of adjust the game to a theme that fits their catalog their portfolio of games you know or or maybe something that they feel like you are you are ready to to be to be active in in taking this with them to to where they want to, to go so they, if they feel that you give them this space and that you open it up so that they like the idea but also want to do something with it and see that you are okay with that and you're ready for the work, this is really good, right? If publishers feel your drive and you know, they feel the passion and the, 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 the tenacity of, of you wanting to get involved and work and do the work and expand and enhance something and develop something, that's something that a publisher loves, right? And, and, and also really the, just, the, just how well does it fit with what they already have. Because normally publishers will tend to cater a specific group, right? Well, they will have a catalog of things that is normally groomed to a specific group. So they already have a specific audience in mind. So normally when you're doing your pitch, you actually should start by all the things that I just said, but also when, when it's time to present that pitch, that video pitch or that one page pitch, you need to first look at the array of publishers that exist in the space that have games that are similar somewhat to the game that you have to pitch, right? And only then, you know, go look up where they are and what's their email and on what their website and if they have a form that you can fill out or, or maybe just look them up on a, con on a convention where you can go like Essen or something like that and just, you know, go, go talk to them. 
you know, and say, hey, I love your games. I got something that's along your lines. Publishers love that. Publishers love that. Unless if they're looking to diversify a portfolio, but normally they will want something that's in line with what they already have because they have the ecosystem developed already. They have a, a player base, a client base, basically, that, that will purchase games of that type. So they, they have that work done already. So it's, it's nice if you bring them something that they are familiar with and that they know that their audience is going to love. So this is really good. Um, yeah, I think there's something that needs to be stated, which is don't just guerrilla flood every single publisher's mailbox with your pitch. That's not a good way to do it. <coughs> sure, you could do that. Sure, you could, you could do that. It doesn't hurt. Eventually, those that care will reply. It's one way to do it, but I re recommend not doing that because publishers really don't like when you send unsolicited um, work or, or, or propositions or whatever. They really don't. And this is also true for the, 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 you know, if you're writing a book, right? Publishers really tend to not like when unsolicited work is sent to them. Most of them will want to have, most of them already have a timeline where they are receiving uh, uh, um, uh, prototypes and pitches and all that. They have a timeline in their year where they're open for that. Almost all of them have the, a calendar where that's a part of the, of the year or sometimes two times a year. And, and, and all of them will have a method in how they do this. So they sometimes have a, a website where they have a, a, a specific email for those submissions or a form that you can submit with all the details and a few images and, and the, maybe a PDF with the rules and you send it to them directly from their website. Or some of them will prefer to have like scheduling an hour for a, or a few minutes for, for your pitch in a person-to-person a -person, uh, at, at a convention or something like that. You know, there's a lot of those and there's a lot of publishers that will send, uh, sometimes will send you emails saying, hey, we're going, we're opening up the, 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 uh, the schedule for you to fill in with which, which time of the day during this convention is good for you. And you, you know, claim a spot there for, for your pitch, for your prototype or prototypes. So normally this is the best way to do it. It's live. This is normally the, the I think from experience, this is normally where the, the where it's where it's easier to get a feel on how the publisher is interested or not. And also it's best for you to navigate their doubts, right? If they have a few doubts, you can easily tackle those doubts and, and reply with an email and with a with a written or a video thing you don't have that interaction you can't really measure the pulse you can't really reply quickly if they're scratching their head on a specific element you can't really just clarify that right and, and sometimes that's just enough for a publisher to not bother and just let it slide and not not pick up that that um, pitch so you want to have those uh, doubts be cleared as soon as they pop and you can only do that live because normally, um, you know, a publisher will, will, will have a few questions, most likely right? they will have a few questions. So also your pitch can include a few things that might answer those commonly, the, the, those frequently asked questions, right? So you can have something like that as an extra on the side that they can look up. Sometimes it's having the, the, the whole, the rule book itself sometimes is, a, but it's not as good as in in person. So yeah, don't do unsolicited sendings and like massive sendings. Search out where they have in their website, where they have the emails, and search for the the specific email for the the, the, the game submissions. And and yeah, and as as much as possible, try to do live. Right, try to go to cons, try to schedule a meeting in a con. If there's a publisher that is, is a publisher that you would love to work, it's like the perfect fit for you. It's the publisher that you love, the games that you have, their catalog, and you feel like the game you, you have is perfect for their catalog and you feel very strongly about this. Don't be detracted by they don't have a way to reach them. Try just sending first an email asking to submit a, 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 
a, a proposition, a, pro, a prototype. You know, just ask first, right? Send them an email saying, hey, I don't want to send anything that you haven't solicited, so I'm, I'm going to ask, can I send you this, right? Do that. You know, sometimes publishers really are really open to that. And sometimes they'll say, okay, sure, yeah, send it. Yeah. Sometimes they'll say, no, okay, no, but we will let you know when we are accepting, you know, so that's nice. You know, if you can get that timeline where they will be receptive, you can just wait until, until then and then send it and they know your name, you know, they know your name, they already spoke to you. So it's really nice when a publisher already knows who you are and have already, already established in, uh, that you're going to be sending something to them. So that's really nice. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Thanks so much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel for more free videos like this one. If you are looking for more advanced lessons or wish to show me your own work, check out my Patreon for more information. If you like this video, why not share it with a friend or a colleague that is interested in game design? I'll see you in the next one.